Hey, this is Thomas Galdenzi with CombatSportsCoverage.com. I'm here interviewing UFC vet Frank Trevino over his upcoming victory he received this past weekend in, over in Australia for Hex Fighting Series. So Frank, tell me a little bit, how did you get a fight uh, in Australia? Do you have connections over there, promoters, or do you have like a couple friends over there? <laughs> no, actually, no, no, no. Uh, actually, uh, this fight was uh, presented to me by my manager, uh, Wade Hampton, nice. um, from, from Big big, uh, big Fat Promotions. He, he handles most of the fighters, like uh, Thomas Almeida, um, oh, wow. uh, uh, Charles Oliveira, stuff like that in, in the UFC, whatnot. He's had more, like I said, he handled my career as well. So I mean he's been, he's been real helpful to my career and um, I mean he, he he approached me about the fight asked me if I wanted to go to Australia to go fight out there um, the money sounded good so we went ahead and you know we, we went ahead and booked it and we went out there. Awesome, and so tell me a little bit about your opponent. I believe his name was um, JJ Ambrose. Yeah, JJ Superman Ambrose. Nice. And so, tell me a little bit about like how was the fight? Did you did you win by TKO, submission, a decision? I won by a I won I won, I won a split decision. Uh, I honestly thought I won each and every one of each and every one of the rounds. Um, I thought I was uh, dominant in the first, second, and third round. But uh, they did give me a split. Two judges saw it my way. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, so I did. I did get the split, and um, I mean, Jay is a tough guy. You know, he he went out there try try, try to implicate his his plan on me, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was just I was just way too crafty for him that that night, and you know, he wasn't able to capitalize on anything he worked on. Yeah, that's that's surprising that you pulled it off because uh, it was in his hometown, and you know, I'm surprised. I could see why they made it a split, most likely because they're probably trying to help their boy out. Yeah, well, he, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a home, he wasn't a hometown guy. He, oh, okay. He's actually from he, he's actually from California and he trained on a Phuket top team. Oh, nice. And um, so he he, uh, he he he's been he's been a, a, around for a while. I think that this that was his like second fight at Hex. And oh, okay. So, and he and he had, he had like a, a good following at Hex from the very first uh, event that he had that where, where he showed up and he won by guillotine. So uh, everybody thought that he was just gonna come in and do the exact same thing to me, you know, go in there and guillotine me or, or finish it, finish me off real quick. Mm-hmm. And that was gonna be the uh, that was gonna be the fight. But uh, I mean, like I said, I, I went ahead and proved him wrong and 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 pushed the fight, you know, to to to, to a limit, and uh, he wasn't able to handle it. That's great. That's awesome. You know, especially because uh, I'm guessing how how long did you have to acclimate to the time difference? Oh man, all I had it was a couple of days. We, we we got there Thursday. Uh, we were supposed to actually get there on on to, on went on Tuesday, I think. Oh, wow. We were supposed to we were supposed to fly out when uh, Monday, mm-hmm. but we didn't we didn't end up flying to uh, uh, flying out till Tuesday. So when we fly, 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 flew, flew out on Tuesday, we flew out on Tuesday night. We lost a day on the flight, so we didn't get there till Thursday morning. And in reality, I was there Thursday morning. The uh, weigh-ins was Friday. The fight was was Saturday. So oh wow! I was there. Yeah, I was there for three, three, four days at most. You know, trying to uh, uh, accustom to the time change and whatnot. Oh wow! So yeah, I bet that I bet that was rough with yeah, the weight cut and everything. Tough. And was this what yeah. was this fight at one seventy or one fifty five? No, it actually was at one eighty five. Oh wow! Um, uh, yeah, and, and the reason why it was a 185 is because they, uh, like I said, they saw that, you know, I'm stuck at, at the airport, and I told them, all like, man, I'm walking about right now at 180. Oh. So, um, so and my, my, my plan was to get there on, to get there on Monday, and, and to get there on Monday and be able to cut the rest of the week, you know? Mm-hmm, exactly. But, I mean, I just they didn't get there in time, and, and I told them, I'm not going to be able to make it due to all this, uh, Due to all this um, trouble that I'm having at, at, at the airport, so they came up with an agreement that they would they would move up the fight to to middleweight, and uh, we went in and we went in with went that route, and we did it. That's great. So that's awesome. Yeah. That you came out with the victory, and um, so I have a few other questions. Was do you have any other fights scheduled with Hex or anyone else coming up? Uh, nothing up up close yet. Nothing that's closed and deals. It's, I don't hear it here and there. I've been hearing things here and there, but nothing, nothing for sure. So I don't want to say anything uh, uh, just, just yet, just, just yet. Okay. Uh, until, uh, until I get something.
talking for uh, concrete. Uh, I know for sure that uh, Hex did want me to go back. So uh, That'd be I'm, good. Just waiting on them. I'm, I'm just waiting on them, yeah. Okay, awesome. And then so, so your record right now, outside of the UFC, you're still undefeated. I believe you are 13-0 and 0 if you don't, if outside of the UFC, you've never lost. Is that correct? That's correct. I'm 13-0 uh, outside of the UFC. Uh, I've never lost outside of the UFC. Uh, yeah, even those, even those two losses in the UFC to me were kind of questionable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so uh, like I said, to me, I mean, okay, I mean, I, I take those losses, you know, on my record. But I mean, to me and myself, I, I have a lot more to, to offer than those two fights, you know. Yeah, definitely. It, <clears throat> and out of those two UFC fights that you that you did lose, which opponent would you say was harder? Was it Sage Northcutt or was it Johnny Chase? Yeah, it was definitely it was tough. it was definitely Johnny John, John, uh, Johnny Chase. Uh, the, the, uh, he was a lot stronger than I thought he was. Mm. Um, I couldn't really find him um, as far as my, my my target was. Like it was hard for me to. Hard for me to engage him. Uh, mm -hmm. Hard for me to hard for me to find him. And every time that I would find him, he was real quick to take me down or to push the takedown or, or to push the, his wrestling on. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he, he really he really uh, he was a, he was a stronger out of the, all the opponents that I faced in the UFC. I want to say that guy was uh, the guy that was that that really pushed me to my limit, and I felt oh, that wow. I, I was I, I was able to handle and and. And take a three round fight against a guy that was just knocking people out. Left yeah, and right. yeah, I remember the fight. That fight was great. It was a great fight. Yeah. So I mean, to me, I thought, to me, I thought that I did okay. Being, being that you know he was just going in there and knocking everybody out. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, yeah, like that to me in in itself was a victory to myself, even though I didn't come out with the with the with the loss. But uh, I mean, to me, I, I felt that that was an accomplishment because I was able to fight through the whole fight against a top guy, exactly. you know, in, in, in the division. So, I mean, I, I, I felt good afterwards. Exactly. And then, what about, what do you feel about Sage's Northcutt's rise? Because you were Sage's Northcutt's first UFC fight. And then since then, yeah. he kind of, he's just kind of blown up. You know, he's making a lot of good money for just, a, you know, a guy in the UFC who won a few fights. And how, how do you feel about that? Like, do you feel like if you would have maybe took him out in the first fight, that could have been you? Uh, definitely. I mean, that's definitely something that goes through my mind. But I also think that it's a it's a big hype train, and, and mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, 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 he just got put a, a stop to by a guy that was uh, out of shape, looked like shit. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, but it, it's true. I mean, the it guy, is. the guy that he fought against, that I mean, I, I I mean, not not to not to speak bad about him, but I mean, I would rape that guy, you know, and I would I would wish they gave me the competition. Or they would have given me the competition they give him. Yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of ridiculous, you know. When you really sit down and think about it, they've been catering this kid since they since they started right from the get go. I mean, my fight happened with him. I wasn't even given a chance to defend myself or or even to attempt to make it a fight before Irving stopped the fight. I do so agree. I, that fight was stopped early. I I, I I remember watching the fight, and I've watched it before the interview. And I, I do think you, you weren't out or anything. You're you're getting back up and everything. So I think I should have let yeah, the fight was, go on. Actually, I was actually I was actually aiming for his legs. Mm -hmm. So when I was when I was moving towards him, I was actually gonna grab a hold of his legs and suck him in. I do that to a lot of people and and end up on top, and I was gonna start making him pay for we you know whatever he had done. Mm -hmm. So I mean. In all honesty, that that was a fluke, a fluke win for him. He'll never get that win against me ever again, you know. And, and that's why I'm on the hunt. I'm honestly on the hunt. Uh, I'm I'm trying to get back into the UFC, and as soon as I get back into the UFC, I'm gonna request for that to be my first fight because I really want to kick his ass. I love it, man. That's uh, you can tell you're really sin sincere on everything that you're saying. You can tell you feel very confident. You sound like a very confident man right now, and that that's a scary man when you're confident. And <clears throat> are you feeling more confident now, like since you've been now to the big show, and you know you're trying to make your way back there, or is it just something new that you've been doing in your new like workout routines to make you feel a little bit more confident in everything? No, 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 no. It's just uh, I I know my skill level. I know I know where I can I, I I hang out at. And I mean, just I mean, this this proved it again. You know, this past victory proved it again that you know I belong in the biggest shows. I mean, you got JJ Ambrose who was on the Ultimate Fighter. I mean, he couldn't even handle me. I mean, I mean, 
that what, what, what is there to show about these other fighters that were on the Ultimate Fighter? And mm-hmm. Probably have won the have probably have won the Ultimate Fighter and whatnot, and you know they're they're still there while I'm over here on the sidelines because of a uh, technicality per se because of what happened. You know, and, mm-hmm, you know exactly. You know, it's, I, I, I honestly think that I should be given another shot. Uh, I cleaned up my act. I tried to. Uh, I try to, you know, remain um, sober free and whatnot to try to to try to to try to ac- accommodate to their whatever rules they m- they might have now. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I'm just I'm just waiting for the call, man. I'm I'm trying to get two more victories in the book and see if they'll call me there. Yeah, I believe they should. I mean, your record speaks for itself. I, your record right now is th- uh, thirteen and two. Then outside of the UFC, you're thirteen and zero. So I, I yeah. feel like if not the UFC Bellator should be giving you a call any any time. And then yeah, definitely. So I know you're a big Star Wars person. So <laughs> tell me, what did you think about the last Star Wars? Were you a fan of it or? I actually am a fan of the last Star Wars. The last Star Wars I, I thought was very very good. Um, a lot of people hated it because they were like, "Oh, well, it's the same rerun of the old, yeah. old, old, old movie." And I was like, "Yeah, you know, I can agree to that." Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there was a lot of there was a lot of action. Yes. There was a lot of new char- There was a lot of new characters that were being introduced into the movie. The movie was not boring due to that. That that, that was something that I, that usually happens when you have a movie that that they're really introducing a uh, a character. Sometimes the movie tends to be a little boring, mm-hmm. but. But these, they, they kept the action going on from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie, and it was just, it was just nonstop. Like, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? And then at the very end, when they hit you with that Luke Skywalker scene where he doesn't yeah. really say anything, you know, he just doesn't say nothing. It's like, dude, come on, dude. Like, you want to see the next one? You want to see what happens? Exactly. And yeah, man. It just, it just makes you a fan immediately. You know, it's a great, it's a great movie. That's true. Good points. And I have another question. So when you were in the UFC, you you dealt with Reebok, right? As one of your as your sponsor. Yeah. And how do you feel about that? Do you feel like Reebok being the only sponsor for the UFC fighter is a good idea, or do you think going out there and hustling your own sponsors is actually more beneficial for you? It, 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 it's actually more beneficial to hustle for your own sponsors because uh, because of the way Reebok pays out. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I understand what they're trying to do. And it does make it less stressful for the fighter, you know, to get the sponsorship money and whatnot. But the only thing that I don't agree on is the way we get our money. We sometimes get our money like maybe 10, 15 days after the event. Um, and that's not the way we sponsorships work. Sponsorship money gets paid to the fighter before the event mm-hmm. gets even put out. You know, that way they can pay for training. They can pay for corners. They can pay for corners to be flown out. Whatever whatever they need, expenses need to be paid. That that is paid for with the sponsorship money, and that's what that that's what that's what uh, most fighters live off of is sponsorship money, not so much the fight the, the fight money itself. So it does hurt the fighter in a sense because of that. But I mean, at the same time, they do give you a lot of good stuff. I mean, you get shoes, you get um, you know gear, whatnot, yeah. bags. You know, so I mean, it, it's a give and take. Mm-hmm. I mean, dep- depending on what you what you want. But I mean, pre- preferably for me, I prefer that you know they go back to the whole. You know, we can put our banners, we can do this, we can do that. I mean, prime example when I fought Johnny Case in uh, in Mexico City, I made eight thousand dollars on sponsorship. Oh, wow. I, 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 I I I fought I fought a uh, Sage Northcutt. I made twenty five hundred dollars on sponsorship. That doesn't add up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it doesn't add up. The math is not there. And so, you made uh, great uh, points about how the sponsors should pay beforehand because, you know, you do need that money to help, you know, do your training camp, to do it the right way. You know, you want to be a high-level MMA fighter. You can't half-ass your training. You have to do it top-notch. And so I feel like they should be paying at least half. They could pay half up front and then half after the fight. You know, I, I didn't even know that. It's actually really good points you made. Yeah, no, and actually, that's the only the real, real big problem I have on that. I think it's very important for uh, for, pay, for for the sponsors to, to pay up front, mm-hmm. you know, for the fighter to be able, to be able to go out and let's say he wants to go out uh, uh, two three weeks and spend out at King's MMA, you know, he he'll be able to take that flight with that money and, and pay for a room while he's there and 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 train with these people over there, you know, exactly. Like, that's how that that's how sponsorships help fighters. It's not so much. 
extra pocket cash or extra pocket change that you put in their pocket. No, it's uh, it's it's to help the fighter grow. It's to help the fighter move on and and to achieve their next goals and whatnot. So so it's very important for the for the fighter to have sponsors. And uh, I think right now the I mean you know Bellator is doing a good job with mm-hmm. allowing their guys to have sponsors, and that's why I think the main reason why Ben Henderson moved because. I mean, to him, it's, he's going to make a lot more money on one banner that he, that he puts out on Bellator than he's going to make in one one fight of, of, of for the Reebok deal. It doesn't add up. Yeah, it doesn't. So I think, yeah, because I think even Tisha Torres, which is, I think she has like three or, three or four fights in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Right? Correct? Yeah. She has three or, four, three or four victories in the UFC. She's getting paid the exact same amount I am. Oh, Which is twenty five hundred. Mm-hmm. That's not right. And That's she was on right. the Ultimate Even Fighter. Exactly, she was on the Ultimate Fighter. She's she had she had a name before the before even this uh, before she even came into the show mm-hmm. or into the UFC. And she's getting paid the exact same chump change that, that the bottom feeders are getting paid. It's not right for them, you know. It's not right for fighters like this too. When they, they come from an extensive background, uh, they, they they won't honor those fights, you know. They honor the pride fights and they honor the WEC, uh, the WEC fights and 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 even and, and the. The what's it called? The what's that of the show? The Showtime show? Uh, oh, the Lead XE? I, I forgot. I forgot what that Showtime show was. I think it might be a lead. Um, but any, anyhow, um, yeah, like they, 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 they honor all these other fights, but they don't they don't honor the the Invicta fights and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it kind of it kind of it kind of makes me like wonder like why would they why wouldn't they honor the same fights that they just bought Invicta? Like it doesn't make sense. Yes, that's some good points. You know. You know, so I don't know. It's it just it, it, it's a lot of like they need to fix up a lot of things. But uh, but all in all, they do mean well. Mm-hmm. You know, they do they, they do mean well. But uh, in a sense, they don't realize how much it's hurting the fighter right now. You know, because of this, it's just the beginning portion or beginning stages of the of the whole uh, the whole rebound deal. So I guess it's I guess it's, it's pretty starting up. They're trying to find a way it's going to make it work or whatnot. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, as of right. As of right now, I know the fighters aren't happy. I know fighters aren't happy. Yes. And for the last question, <clears throat> tell me, what what is your best attribute as being a fighter? Is it your heart? Is it your will? Is it your knockout power? What would you say is your strongest attribute as being as a, a fighter? Um, I want to say it's my, my heart. Um, I, I, I told myself during the fight, uh, I, there, there was a couple of times during the fight where JJ had a... A uh, real tight heat, you know what I mean? That's like, you know what, man? I'm, I'm either gonna, I'm either gonna go to sleep or get out of this. Oh wow! Uh, like I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I had given myself that that choice already. I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna tap out to this guy. There you go. You know, I, was, I, I was either gonna get out or I was gonna go to sleep. You know? So, uh, but yeah, like I, I want to say that my heart is the biggest, uh, my biggest thing that helps me out in there because I, I push myself to the limit. And, and, I, and I try to push as much as, as hard as I can. Um, I think even in my uh, on my profile uh, for the UFC, uh, they have all the goes his heart. Oh, nice. And so uh, I, I, I like that. The daddy's got something, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, exactly. And heart, I feel like heart's probably the, the key and the best weapon to have, actually, as an MMA fighter. You know, some guys, yeah, you, you don't have it. You can't train. Yeah, you can't train hard. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's something that, 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 that's given to the fighter. And, um, you know, you really have to, you know, instill in yourself. You know, nobody can do it for you. You, you can't have a coach and give you heart. You can't have a, a, a trainer and instill heart into you. It's something you're born with, something you're given. And I feel because of the, my past uh, experiences, you know, being so competitive and, you know, the dreams of high school and whatnot. You know, I think that that helped me out. You know, to establish my heart. I never, mm-hmm. I never did like, I never did like losing. You know, it was something that I, I, I always got stuck. You know, yeah. You know, we, I, 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 I played for the Edinburgh Bobcats, so we had an undefeated record for a while, and, and oh, then we, wow. we, we, ended up, we ended up losing. In, um, and what in sport a, is this? Football or yeah, wrestling? Football, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, we ended up we ended up losing in the playoffs. So uh, I, th- I think I built my my characteristic of. Of, of having that heart and having that competitive drive from them, you know, from the from my times in football and from my times in, in high school with uh, with guys and whatnot, and playing for those for those memorable times, you know, playing football when I was mm-hmm. guys, you know, it's something that it's something that hadn't been done here in the valley. I 
yesterday for a while, and then we, we went ahead and put the value on the map again and started going to the playoffs once again. So it was, it was something that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it's great. All right, and then last and not final, um, is there anyone you'd like to thank? Any sponsors out there you'd like to thank or anyone? Um, yeah, you know, everybody that, that helped me out, I'd like to thank, you know, I'd like to thank, um, uh, I'd like to thank my girl, Sandra, I'd like to thank, uh, um, uh, Louis Palacios from Vitamin Shack, he, he's always a big help, uh, Dimas de Leon from SCFC, Raul, Raul Ramos from SCFC, uh, Jeff Van Gundy from JC, uh, he used to have JC Promotions, but, uh, uh, Jeff Van Gundy, he's, uh, also a real good man, um, Rick, uh, Rick, Rick uh, Ramirez from uh, Ramirez de la Garza Law Firm and um, everybody from Cairo, Cairo Sync, everybody that helped me out during this camp, Carlos Diego, you know, all my, all my guys from, uh, from Gracie Baja, you know, I appreciate everybody that helped me out, appreciate it. Yeah, great. Okay, well, thank you again for spending the time with us and letting us interview. And I hope everything works out great for you. And I hope you get back in the UFC. And I hope you get that rematch with Sage. And make sure to um, <laughs> and make sure to check us out at CombatSportsCoverage.com. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your time. Thank you.